for better interactivity, I wanted to show you how I perform planning in the program. I think that uh, a lot of doctors that are watching the webinar uh, are maybe in, in, in some degree do their own work or, you know, of the software planning. So as it would be in practice, when I want to move teeth measly or distally, first of all, I would use, first of all, layers. This is initial position of the teeth. Then I start to perform some kind of expansion, but take notice that uh, second molars and I can answer not move in like an anchorage. Uh, then when posterior teeth are uh, in a position that I need, then I started to move canine, canines and incisors and the final uh, aligning. So when I work with incisors in mesiodistal plane, for example, here I was uh, moving them from left to right. I did this kind of movement by uh, in tilting of the crown and not moving the teeth by translation. Uh, interproximal enamel reduction, IPR. What kind of mistakes we can make and what mistakes I made? Small table, you can do this screenshot from the textbook of Didier Fillon from 2006. Uh, so what kind of tooth surfaces we can safely separate. You see that upper incisors uh, we can make separations 0 0.3 from each surface, lower incisors 0 0.2 from each surface, which, got, which is quite a lot. These are interesting articles that I, I found in PubMed about uh, the correlation between the virtual IPR calculated by the ClinCheck, by the computer in the lab, and the uh, real performed IPR by the doctor. Just not to read everything, uh, we can just reach short conclusions. The precision and accuracy of IPR on upper jaw, so uh, the pre uh, pre accuracy of the calculation of the IPR on upper jaw was 45% in control group on lower jaw, 37% uh, in control group, and the accuracy uh, is calculated by the difference between the plant separation in on the computer, uh, by the plant stripping, and the stripping IPR performed by the doctor. Also quite fresh article from Angle Orthodontist. Also they uh, uh, try to understand the pro uh, prognosed IPR on computer and the actual stripping and the mean difference was 0 0.15 millimeters on canines of the lower jaw. It was the highest discrepancy of our calculations. And in my own experience, I can tell you that no matter that I fill in the uh, IPR charts, you see it's in English and Russian, my charts might of separation when then I compare uh, what was the real stripping I always see quite big discrepancies here you see the uh, uh, the total stripping was like uh, 0 0.35 and I performed 0 0.15 and here I decided not I will not use stripping and here it was like 0 0.2 0 0.3 and in uh, half of the contacts I made mistakes. It's even older uh, card from 2017. You see, I planned stripping 0 0.5 and performed 0 0.25, so two times less. Here performed 0 0.5 and just performed only 0 0.25. So by that we see quite a lot of discrepancy. And here I also uh, want to show the program again. Why do we have such major mistakes when we calculate the stripping, the IPR? 
the thing is that when we load the module in the program uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a intro scanner or it's a laptop scanner desktop scanner uh, the program will uh, fill in the invisible to the uh, scanner areas uh, automatically an anatomy that we have here is unreal you see that when I uh, magni magnify you see uh, un unnatural uh, surface of the teeth we see some kind of uh, 3d or uh, geometrical artifact that the program would uh, see as a natural tooth so when the programs that calculate the stripping automatically they calculate the IPR uh, taking into consideration the data from these uh, geometrical artifacts so when we calculate the IPR we have to take into consideration these details it is first of all and the second thing we have to uh, check the dynamic stripping what does it mean it means that on certain stage the IPR could be more than in the final because as usual uh, the measure of this stripping is performed on the final model and you see here uh, we have the movements in layers what would be if I would start moving teeth immediately for example incisor buccally by the end of it it will be placed uh, uh, very beautifully evenly but during its dynamics somewhere in the between it will go through this canine and I would be forced to severely uh, strip this contact so during the planning I uh, dedicate a lot of time to the possibility to see that dynamic stripping will not be more than final uh, stripping in the static position of the teeth this is very important and also I will show you some of my uh, screw up, screw ups screwed ups uh, that I had uh, in the uh, start of my career first one one and a half years of working with aligners I was not only doing it by myself but I was ordering from the company in Italy also I received their uh, IPR charts where it was said that I had to do certain IPR on certain aligners of course I was using the ruler for the stripping and I thought that I was working precisely but if we take notice on the final results after the aligning of the teeth I noticed that a stripping was uh, more than I needed you see in the card it was said that I have to perform a stripping on 0.3 millimeters I do did it but when the line is finished and the patient still had spaces between teeth that I was forced to close with composite material even uh, more so we think it's virtual IPR I will show you what it is in the program in all the programs there is a tool that is called virtual IPR virtual virtual stripping I do not recommend you to use this tool virtual IPR can let you uh, to do the stripping of the proximal surfaces on the computer on a virtual tooth just a moment I lost my models I'm sorry for the slow work because for that uh, broadcasting I had to switch off the video card so my computer is not very quick very fast well the, the program I lost it, oh, well, it doesn't matter so the virtual IPR is performed on the computer and it's supposed uh, that we would uh, repeat the contours of the virtual IPR when we start uh, doing stripping when the patient would come to us for an initial appointment to deliver the aligners here 
their lab perform the virtual super uh, stripping and to place in their uh, liner on this tooth i had to strip it like that you see the tooth ideally follows the geometry of the aligner and for that i had to grind the tooth quite severely i think you see it a liner already uh, adjusted on the tooth it's fitted but what i was uh, forced to do with the tooth i was forced to uh, uh to to you see to uh, make it awful and, fi and finally in the end of treatment i had to do veneer on this tooth just to correct this uh problem from the virtual uh stripping i do not recommend you to use it just when you do separation when you do stripping in the program when you plan it so you just uh, uh you just uh dent uh, collide teeth with each other and you just calculate what is the uh overlapping of the teeth on each other this uh, uh, collision when they're true to each other. So when, uh, some more examples when I did stripping, not very accurately, maybe accurately, but I did it in the beginning. So for example, left wrote to me that I had to do uh, stripping 0.2 millimeters on each surface of the tooth. So I did it in the beginning, but when the teeth start to align and I was using separating discs, uh, we can took notice that they have spaces that the stripping was uh, uh, too much. And we have to correct it, we have to uh, move teeth uh, uh, lingually. So another example, then it was calculated, calculated that between incisors, the stripping has to be 0 0.6 6 millimeters. I take the disc to the stripping on 0 0.6 millimeters, but it was stupid from my side because first I had to push these teeth to make the expansion to align the teeth according to the arch contour, then to work with the disc. When I put the disc from between the teeth that are overlapping to each other. I, uh, you see, damage their anatomy. And when you finish the correction, the anterior teeth looked not very beautiful. Another example, this is also my mistake. I started to perform IPR of this surface immediately with a disc. First, I supposed to start it with, uh, uh, with the manual strips, with diamond strips, and only then should I uh, follow to use uh, rotating instruments, machined instruments. And here you can see that I made big mistake and I damaged the tooth anatomy of the patient. So I'm performing stripping right now. So let's have a look at a short video that I recorded in the clinic. So I. Uh, Put the patient in a supine position. I am in a position on 12 o'clock. So I put on the uh, breast of the patient the uh, separate stripping guide, the uh, IPR card, and I start to perform stripping with the strips just to open the contacts. Very often I finish the stripping with the strips, so I'm not using discs or any other machined instruments. But if uh, I have to remove quite a big amount of enamel, we use discs and burrs. For example, here I needed to uh, uh, strip the distal part of the canine, and I use the canine. They use the disc. Of course, after each manipulation i'm checking the amount of work with the help of ipr go gauge so it is called like a ruler for the stripping i do the separation of the disc only the contacts that where teeth are uh, 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 straight in the arch if there is, uh, for example, uh, problems with the tipping or with the inclination of the teeth, with the disc we can damage the anatomy. So we use discs only when the teeth are uh, aligned in the arch. So after the disc I do the contouring and polishing. Uh, I do polishing, of course, with a fine and extra fine strips, paper strips. 
and I do stripping not for the complete volume it's the first appointment of the patient I do only 30% of the stripping from the plant then the teeth will move to expansion uh, to uh, protrusion so we'll have spaces because of the protrusion that's why it's uh, uh, more than enough to do the small amount of the stripping just to give teeth some kind of space for the initial lining so that's how teeth look looks uh, look like after the stripping the NML is, is not damaged we touched in some areas you know, gingiva that's why you see a small bleeding and of course we have to remember that polishing is has is very necessary after each manipulation when we perform stripping but also there is another mistake what if we uh, uh, push on a tooth with a uh, with a liner but we don't have enough space to displace the tooth we have uh, the effect so-called of the watermelon seed when we push on a tooth but the tooth has nowhere to go because the stripping was not performed and the tooth is going to intrude it will be uh, a vertical displacement in intrusion that's what you see so the uh, the liner is, is fitted perfectly on each teeth but lateral incisors went into intrusion because I did an or negative overload it's like see the negative attachment I didn't do stripping uh, in the proper time and teeth just displayed displaced in, in intrusion so we have to create the space for the inclination of the teeth if you want to hold it in vertical position we also can use attachment that we used for extrusion for example vertical uh, I'm sorry of uh, horizontal attachment for extrusion another example of the watermelon seed effect this work was produced for one of my clients on a virtual setup tooth three two uh, is in the position as you see on the left side and on the right side this is a scan that uh, sent to me my clients after tooth went to intrusion what could we see here why it happened you see on that on virtual setup we supposed to perform IPR and tooth in this liner has to be uh, aligned in this uh, aligner but here doctor didn't do stripping so the uh, aligner pushes on a tooth it has nowhere to go so what the tooth could do is going into intrusion and you see that intrusion happened because the doctor didn't perform the IPRR in the correct timing in a correct position how to correct it from this situation we'll talk in the next webinar a little bit later but this is quite a simple technique I asked my uh, staff member to make these cutouts in a liner to make this special place for the extrusion of the tooth so for the overcorrection of the vertical position of the tooth and they managed to extrude it successfully so what kind of conclusions we do from this block about the separations about stripping about mistakes the main point is that the that the virtual IPR the stripping plan that was calculated by the computer could be different from what you would perform in reality as a rule of thumb the prognosed stripping is bigger than the one that was performed in reality about 50 or more percent so if you uh, see that uh, that it's written to have 0 0.5 millimeters or in the stripping plan you have to think it several times maybe to do it it's better to do step by step for example 0 0.1 0 0.15 millimeters every time and checking it with the uh, uh, IPR gauges because the IPR chart is rough a guideline but we do not follow it straightforwardly blindly we have to 
uh, see clinically and will perform RPR, RPR when it's necessary. For those who do the, uh, the uh, virtual planning itself, uh, let's try to check the dynamic contacts as I showed you in the Maestro program when we have crowding. First, we have to create spaces for the teeth and then you can perform the main volume of stripping and I recommend to start stripping from the first appointment of the patient but with minimal amount no more than 0 0.1 0 0.15 from each surface then you have to uh, polish the enamel after each stripping without any exceptions at the same time don't try to miss the separation when it was planned also check the tightness of the contacts with the uh, thin matrices or with the ruler with a gauge thickness of one zero point one and do not let patients uh, go uh, go out for many months i do follow-ups uh, controls uh, every three four aligners during that period of time we wouldn't have any critical uh, problem and some kind of mistake that we performed wouldn't be able to uh, be so dramatic for example if we perform more separation that we needed also it could lead to some kind of critical problem so i uh, try to uh, plan more of frequent schedules three four aligners i don't like to let patients go for a lot of time without control i don't like patients from other countries because more often we have some kind of problems with these patients where i have to do some overcorrections and revisions